ஹாய் ஆல் வெல்கம் டு யூடியூப் சேனல் ஆஃப் அவர் உன்னதி ப்ரொபப்ளி ஆஃப்டர் டூ மந்த்ஸ் ஆஃப் அ லாங் டிலேட் வி ஆர் பேக் வித் அ வெரி எக்ஸ் எக்ஸைட்டிங் சீரீஸ் பெஸ்ட் ஆன் குபர்னடிஸ் டேஷ்போர்ட் வி வில் ஹாவ் அரவுண்ட் சிக்ஸ் டோட்டல் வீடியோஸ் ஸோ திஸ் இஸ் அ பார்ட் ஒன் வீடியோ பெஸ்ட் ஆன் ஹவு டு டிப்ளை குபர்னடிஸ் டேஷ்போர்ட் ஐ ஹாவ் ரவி விஸ்வகர்மா வித் மீ uh he had done an excellent job and he had his cluster ready as you can see it on the screen uh he has two vms uh so this is a uh you can say on prem setup this is not any cloud setup intentionally we did this so he has two uh, vms one uh, vm with the ip called 192.168.235.223 235.223 and one is 212 that is 212 Uh, so we are using the latest version of kubernetes that is 1.27 uh, probably yeah that's the reason you can see that the container runtime by default here it is container d right so we all know uh, after 1.23 the docker shim support has been removed and then container d came in a picture so this can be a container d and cryo as well so yeah that can be discussed in a separate video that's not the current context so in this video uh, ravi will be deploying his own uh, dashboard on his cluster and we will be discussing how to access the dashboard using the token uh, logic right so yeah i think uh, let's go ahead uh, let's see the kubernetes uh, uh, default uh, you can say bible we all can refer right kubernetes.io/docs uh, he had already marked the dashboard stuff so this is a dashboard uh, uh you can say url from which you can take a help so we will be pasting this in our uh, uh, youtube channel in a comment section in a description section you can get this link uh, readily available so yeah we are just deploying the dashboard so if you see yeah so it creates lot of things when you do a deployment it creates a namespace called kubernetes dashboard it creates a service account called kubernetes dashboard then secrets then config map rule cluster role then deployment then it also creates the uh, it creates two deployments basically so yeah lot of things it deploys so probably uh, we will be discussing a cluster role in this section or in this session as well right so let's see if pods are created or not so we can see kubectl get pods hyphen n uh, because the entire deployment happens on a namespace called kubernetes dashboard so you can see that the pod has uh, the pod deployment is done one is the matrix scrapper and one is the kubernetes dashboard which is up and running so let's try to access it as this is my local cluster as this is my local cluster i need to understand uh, how i can access it from my uh, external logic right so i'm considering my virtual machine as my external system here uh, sorry base machine not external this is my base machine uh, so ravi is using a fedora here uh, so you can see the ip of that base machine also so if you see this ip it is uh, completely uh, different 192.168.235.1 you know why because it has a browser uh, the vms doesn't have a browser we had use a minimal setup so we will be accessing the dashboard from this ip right but how to access it so if you go to a cluster back and let's see this service uh, what has been created in kubernetes uh, dashboard namespace let's try to understand what it is yeah so you can see two services here one is a matrix scrapper service and a kubernetes dashboard service so this 10.97.123.232 it is a internal ip which is also known as cluster ip right so we all know there are four types of services one is cluster ip node pod load balancer and an external name right so yeah let's not talk about that but to access this service this specific kubernetes dashboard service i need to change it to a uh, type called node pod so let's change the type let's edit the service kubectl yeah we can use edit svc uh, the only thing which we need to uh, remember is to mention the namespace always right so let's edit and change the type to cluster ip right uh, sorry node pod cluster ip is a default type 
n capital and p capital yeah make sure this is a case sensitive cool so it might had open a port number uh, on my service so it is 31934 so let me do kubectl get nodes hyphen o wide one more time kubectl get nodes hyphen o wide so that i can get a ip address of a ip address of a uh, master and a worker node right so my worker node ip address is 192.168.235.212 right that that was the earlier setup itself right so let's try to access the uh, dashboard now let's go to browser yeah so please note the browser is of my base machine so i am putting 192 yeah make sure that you are putting http yes in place of http right that is highly important i believe 212 is the ip and uh, 31934 was the port number if i'm not wrong right 934 yeah so you can see you have to accept this uh, private connection sorry it's it's that's the warning ah this is very interesting guys so it you can access the dashboard using a token and a config file also so i believe in our series uh, part 5 or part 6 we will be discussing how to access a dashboard using a cube config file so please stay tuned for that but currently we will be accessing with the token now what happens is a token is generated for a service account so as by default kubernetes doesn't support username password it was there from 1.7 onwards the username password was discarded due to a lot of security reasons due to a lot of uh, security issues uh, as well so uh, currently it is a token based authorization and authentication uh, and i believe uh, even as a part of cis standard this is a good practice right uh, you can even make a ssl uh, base access using a cube config but let's see how to access it using a token so as i said service account is uh, token will be generated for a service account so by default if you see the kubernetes uh, cluster if you do kubectl get sa get sa uh, hyphen n kubernetes dashboard you can see there is a service account called default and a kubernetes dashboard so this service account is going to act as a user for us or like a user for us right so of course this is not actually user but yeah service account basically authorized the api at a uh, api server level so we have a cube api server which does authentication and authorization so service account is one of the logical way to get it authorized right so we need a token for this so in kubernetes till kubernetes 1.25 i believe token was by default created you just need to grab the token and paste it here on the dashboard but if you see in the current scenario token is not there by default so we need to generate a token right or create a token so please note this token is not a join token for cube adm what we did it is different than this right so we will be using kubectl create token Uh, the service account name this is a syntax case please remember kubectl create token service account name and the namespace name a hyphen n namespace so there could be lot of ways of doing this but we are doing in a very simple way so you can copy this entire token make sure you are not copying any white spaces and let's let's paste it on the dashboard Le hopefully you should able to access it in some cases most of the time when you copy it takes the uh, next line also as a uh, what you can say uh, white space so make sure you are to copying a token in a one line scenario so token should be copied in a without spaces without enter nothing right so if you see the notification icon there so it is giving lot of warnings right it is saying uh, your service account doesn't have access to events replica set deployment all those things let me try to cl clear the uh, remove all the notification and if i want to click on deployment let's see if i click on deployment you can see the notification again by default so we have uh, two common practices in the ci uh, cis benchmarking scenario one is least privileges 
and second is separation of duties sod right so when i say least privileges so using that logic what happens is we should give a minimal permission to a specific service account or minimum role to the specific service account comprising comprising that or taking that in a consideration kubernetes by default does not allow anything to view also it has no access because there are lot of incidents happens where kubernetes dashboard got compromised right so to overcome with that scenario what we have is we have a concept of binding a service account with a cluster role so how you bind the service account with a cluster role let's try to understand so there are three things here so you can see one diagram which i had already created so there is something called cluster role binding so please note we have a clarification on what is the difference between cluster role and a role in our fourth part part of this video right probably so but at the in the current context if you see cluster role binding whatever we are discussing or cluster role whatever we are discussing the scope of this is entire cluster so if you are saying you have a edit access assigned to a service account that means it will have a edit access on entire cluster not on a specific namespace right please understand that uh, or the importance of this right so what happens is we have a cluster role view edit admin i can see those cluster roles in a uh, my terminal also if i go there and if i do kubectl get cluster role as see cluster role doesn't comes to attached or does not have a scope of namespace so if you simply do this you will see the cluster role so you, if i if i could, could see there could be a uh, admin access admin then cluster admin edit on a top you can see right and the below you can see at the end there is a view access you can see that right you can double click to highlight ha ah, this is a view access right so this view access let's try to assign this view access to a service account now coming back to the slide uh, or coming back to the diagram what i have how you map a service account and a cluster role together so for doing that we use cluster role binding or in a normal scenario you can say crb cluster role binding maps a cluster role with a service account so crb is equal to cr cluster role plus sa so cluster role binding defines or assigns a cluster role to a specific service account so let's get into it so we have a service account already created with us so we will simply say kubectl create cluster role binding even if you want you can use the previously created cluster role binding also if you want to see you can do kubectl get cluster role binding you must see something called kubernetes dashboard yeah can you see that this kubernetes dashboard cluster role binding is already created but we don't want to confuse our learners with the so many names of kubernetes dashboard we are creating a new cluster role binding here right so let's do that kubectl create cluster role binding you can give any name in my case i am giving maybe my crb my crb then you can say which cluster role you want to assign hyphen hyphen cluster role uh, the cluster role let's give a view access then you can tell which service account right is equal to uh, please make sure that while putting a cluster uh, so, sorry while putting a service account you have to tell the namespace also so kubernetes dashboard is a namespace colon service account so in my case namespace name and service account name is same okay yeah now you can get the token one more time Oh, it, to avoid the confusion, what I will do is I will delete my previous cluster role binding. Kubectl delete because now the service account has two bindings. One is default, no? So let's remove it. Cluster role binding uh, and the name of that cluster role binding was Kubernetes 
dashboard let's remove this so that yeah so yeah there could be a hierarchy of the roles and all that but let's not get into it just to avoid the confusion we are removing the default cluster role binding right now let's get a token again i i don't think we we already have a token so sorry just open the dashboard and if you go through it see i immediately i can see the pods i can see all the workload right let's let's go to the pod and try to delete some pods uh, this is on a default namespace so let's see if it allows or not so it's not allowing so it it's why because we had given a specific permission or a specific uh, access that is a view access so if you want you can change it to edit or a cluster admin or a cluster role and so on right so you can keep playing with it right so yeah that's all uh, in terms of the entire kubernetes dashboard deployment with a little bit discussion on cluster role binding right that's all from my end uh, so if you have any question if you have any comments you can put it on a youtube channel uh, our team will get back to you uh, with the solution as well so thank you so much for watching our video thanks ravi for helping us for this and the entire background work is done by one of our trainer uh, called swanand joshi thanks to him also uh, stay tuned till then stay tuned for the next video guys till then bye and take care thank you